What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, coronavirus is giving all of us a lot of time to kind of ponder different things. And during this time, over the past week or so, I have been, you know, thinking about the question, does the state that you live in matter about how much money that you make? So sure, a lot of us have heard that, hey, like if you move to, let's say, California, you'll be making a lot more money than if you lived in, you know, Oklahoma. But it comes down to how much do the goods cost as well? Because a lot of people will say that even though you're making more money, you're also spending more money in expenses, in taxes, depending on where you live, that makes it all even out in the long run. However, I tried to distinguish between myth and reality to see if there was actually a disparity between those two or if, in fact, the myth was proven true. So I did a couple things to find this information. Part one was kind of making an Excel sheet to make everything, all the data, linear and easy to understand. Sure, you could research all of the USA Today articles to see what state is the cheapest to move to or what state has the least expensive goods. Uh, but what I wanted to do was go a little bit deeper and go into the question about how much money would you have left over after all taxes from federal and state and expenses in each state, technically 51 areas because I did include Washington DC, which is technically a district as well. First off, I wanna say, please scroll down, like this video because I did spend a lot of time and many hours trying to find this information for you guys. And I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button, just so it makes what I do a little bit more worthwhile. Thank you a lot. All right, let's get into it. So first off, what I did is I researched the median amount of income each household makes in each state. And to get this information, I went on the Census Bureau and this data is from 2018. I was expecting to actually have to input all of this data manually into my Excel sheet. But luckily this was the first stop that I made. The Census Bureau made it really easy for me because they actually had a downloadable Excel sheet on their website. And that is where I took the rest of the information I found and added onto it to get my final product, which I have now. This data was really easy to find because a lot of people care about what other people make, especially in different states. So it made my life really easy in this step to find the median income. Next, I looked up the amount of taxes one person would spend in each state. This would be federal, state, and FICA taxes. FICA is more of like your Medicare and your Social Security tax that you automatically get pulled out of your paycheck. I was gonna manually find a calculation and do the calculation myself on each of the taxes that I'm putting into these states, but I found out that it was a lot harder than I expected. Accounting is hard. Don't major in that. So I went on a website called smartasset.com. On this website, I was able to enter the median amount of income each household makes for each state and it would auto populate the amount that you would spend in taxes federally state and FICA disclaimer you would spend more taxes depending on which city you live as well because they're also local taxes but I discovered that a lot of the cities that I put in didn't actually charge local taxes and so I just left that out of the equation. I added up all those taxes and then subtracted it from the total amount of median income and that gave me the you know average disposable income for each household. The next step was to find the expenses that people would spend money on normally for living and this would be you know utilities, rent, and groceries. For rent I kind of used the standard of a two-bedroom apartment I know that's bigger than what some people would rent, especially being a single individual. The reason I picked two bedroom is because, you know, some people want that extra bedroom for, you know, a guest room or something like that. So this process uh, was kind of difficult because all I could find was a lot of CPIs. Normal people don't understand really what CPI is. And plus I wanted to find the monetary amount that you would have after your expenses and taxes. And CPI wasn't really going to get me that unless I did extra work to kind of make that part of the equation. So to find the median amount of, that one would spend on apartments in each state, I went on apartmentguide.com. Just so you guys know, this information was from 2019, so last year, pretty accurate and pretty recent. I just took that, that info for each state and I inputted that into my Excel to 
subtract off of the total disposable income at the end once I found my utilities and my grocery costs. The next part of the problem was to calculate the utilities. Now this was relatively hard, again, trying to find a monetary amount. The only reliable information I could find on this subject was on howmuch.com and this info was from 2018. This gave me a category for each part of the utilities, which would be you know, natural gas, electricity, water. So I took those categories and I added them up and I put those in my utility section on my Excel sheet. Now that I had my rent and my utilities, the hardest part was to find the grocery costs. I almost gave up on this because it was really hard and all I could find was information about CPIs and that wasn't gonna help me now that I had monetary value on both the rent and the utilities, so I needed to find a monetary amount for groceries. I finally came across a website called numbio.com. This was not a US website, I could tell right off the bat because uh, everything was measured in kilograms. Uh, looking at the food choices that they deemed you know, essential, I also determined that this was not a US website as well. But this was the most reliable source that I could find for grocery costs. The rent, the utilities, and the grocery costs I all found were per month. So what I did was I added those all up together, multiplied it by 12, and then subtract that amount from my disposable income, aka after tax income. And that finally gave me the amount that I had after all of my state, federal, and FICA taxes, and also after all of my essential expenses. Now, also, I did not include transportation costs. I didn't want to put that in there because uh, it greatly varies, especially if you own an electrical vehicle. And I finally got my end result, which was all of the money left over that you would have to spend however you wanted after you got all of your necessities out of the way. And after doing this calculation, I can tell you right now that it was not all equal. But before I get to that, please guys go down, scroll down, like this video. It took me again a lot of work to put this together. I'm about to show you the results right now. Here we go. My top state ended up being Alaska with $35,486 left over after taxes and essential expenses. In second place was Wyoming with $32,811. And third place was North Dakota with $30,919 left over. Now I'll put the rest of the you know 48 states up on the screen right in front of you, just so you guys can look at where your state ranks or what state you're potentially wanting to moving to. I do wanna point out, I think it's really funny. I live in California and that happens to be the 51st. A lot of people across the United States have the dream to move to California. But according to this information that I I looked up California is the 51st state on the Excel, which means you have the least amount of money left over after all taxes and expenses. And it is drastically lower than everybody else coming in at $4,771 left over after all taxes and expenses. You know, that's not a number that I am super happy about seeing, but um, it makes sense. There's lots of taxes in California uh, and that's not even including property taxes like if you were to own your own house. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you would, please scroll down in the comments. Tell me, you know, what your opinions are on this, you know, independent study that I did. Tell me ways that I could possibly improve the study in future videos. And maybe if you guys like it, uh, I'll do an extension as well. Also, if you haven't just subscribed, please go and hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to make more content this summer. So if you like what I'm putting out, please give me a like, give me a subscribe. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.